Sports Radio Detroit here at Hype Athletics in Dearborn, Michigan. We're interviewing Gaith Kareem, undefeated welterweight prospect from Dearborn, Michigan. Gaith, welcome to the show. How you doing? We're uh, excited to have him here. I'll do a little pre-background pre before we get started here. I've actually known Gaith since you were about eight years old, right around there. Yeah, he used to come in. Uh, I used to have a, a, a boxing store, and Gabe used to come in and get his passbooks done, and I've seen him come up. So it's actually been fun to watch him. A lot of fighters, you don't meet them until they're in their late teens or maybe even turning pro, and that's when you first hear of them. But it's been fun to be able to watch Gabe from 8 years old all the way up to 20, 20 years old now. So 12 years I've been watching Gabe fight at local shows, back when he was with the Kronk, and now he's turned pro. 4-0 as a pro, doing really well with his career. Uh, I want to get started with just – Talk about training camp for this fight and what's led up for your preparation for Friday's fight. Training camp is going real well. You know, everything everything is going in motion. You know, we've been working real hard, sparring real hard, training, all that. Everything is going real well. And the fight, man, September 14th, man, it's the rematch he asked for. So I'm guessing he's well prepared for this fight, right? So I'm going to be ready. He's going to be ready, and you should see war. I think we're going to. And we were at that fight in May uh, when you beat him the first time. I'm kind of surprised he'd want it twice, but if he said he wants it again, he wants it again. That's what he asked for. Exactly. Uh, I do want to ask you, though, you fought in May. You're scheduled to fight Friday, and you got a card coming up. Another card coming up in November. In November, correct. Three fights for 2018. Is that a pace that for 2019 you're comfortable with, or would you like to maybe see more activity? Uh, hopefully more in 2019. we got more activity coming up in God's will, you know. More fights are going to be coming in, in 2019. I'm, I have two lined up so far. And then in 2019, we're going to have more. And hopefully by 2020, we fight for a world title, man. That's a good plan. It's a good arc, too, uh, time-wise. It could put you late teens, uh, you know, staying undefeated. You could be 18-0, 20-0 around there. So that's a, that's a good a good projected plan. I, I want to ask you, with this fight, you've seen him once already, so maybe you've already got an idea in your mind of what you're going to see. But for the fight in November, say, what do you think when you walk into a ring, when you're at this level and you, as a pro, it's kind of sometimes hard to get information on other fighters. You know, when you're 20-0, 25-0, you can YouTube anybody and see a lot of their stuff in their career. What is your thought process? is walking into a ring or even in training and preparation at your level when you've not seen a guy and maybe the thing you're getting is new information the first time you see him what goes through your mind mentally well what goes through my mind is I've been doing this again I've been doing this since I was five years old you know I got the experience I I've been in I've been in in the ring with world champs you know I've been through it all I've I've took I've took punches from world champs and they they they're real good you know what I mean and uh I'm ready, man. I'm just, I'm just 100% ready, and I'm ready for this guy, for Chester Tamman. I'm, I'm coming for that knockout for sure, for sure. So you're thinking amateur pedigree. There's probably very little a pro that you're going to see curring, cur going forward is going to bring something you've never seen before. You don't think there's any going to be any surprises? Nothing, man. I'm, I'm ready for whatever's coming. I have zero fear in my heart. I've been doing this since I was a kid, and I am ready for anything coming my way, anything, anyone at 147 and hopefully at 140 by 2020 we're, we're fighting for a title at 140. And that's a very very stacked division obviously as you start coming up with guys like Bud Crawford, Errol Spence, you got 140 is just chock full of talent and the, the as of now the belts are still going to be moving around a little bit so by the time you get there in two years that could really give you some opportunities to, to get that first title shot pretty easily and get yourself into the mix. Um, how do you feel locally with the uh, other talent that you spar with and other fighters? Do you move around in gyms? Do you stay here mostly or what's your sparring like Ben? Uh, my, my sparring is that I I spar at Crunk Gym, you know, that's the world's greatest gym, you know, and I go to world's best. I go all over, you know, it's me and my uncle. He takes me all over the gyms to get all different kind of styles, you know. We spar anyone that's at 147 to 160. That's, that's the weight class we spar. So we're just ready, man, ready for this guy. That's really good. And, you know, a lot of guys sometimes locally, they'll stay in the gym that they're at and kind of fight the same people and sort of you adapt to who they are and you know what's going to happen. So it's very, very smart. I know you said was you were in Canada yesterday. I think went over for some, some sparring. So the fact that you're going to see different styles and seeing different people, right, right, brilliant. Question about fighting uh, on the road, though. Is there any plans on maybe leaving Michigan and taking some fights on the road, even if that might get you on, on like a TV spot on an undercard or something of that nature? Uh, I'm just waiting for, you know, my promoter. Sure. Whatever, whatever they tell me and whatever, whatever they get me that's on the schedule, and I'll be ready, man. I'm just staying in the gym, training, and grinding hard, you know. As, as they say, I come from nothing. I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to make the millions. I'm trying to come to the top. I'm trying to reach the top. I'm hungry. I'm young. I really want this guy so bad, you know. 
This guy is getting knocked out September 14th, period. And we're going to be sitting about four feet away. So I want a, a wink and a smile at the Sports Radio Detroit cameras as you lay the guy to sleep. Spot us on the side. Give us a little something. <laughs> well, you know, I have a bias. I've known you for 12 years. I've been in the gyms with you. Uh, fellow Dearborn residents, man, we got, we got too much of a connection here for me not to root for gay. So we want to thank you for your time. We are looking forward to the fight. Of course, uh, Second to None Promotions is going to be featuring the fight on Friday at the Carlos and Warren. Any closing thoughts from you? Oh, just come September 14th and, hey, it's lights out, man. Lights out. I'm telling you, I've worked so hard for this fight. It's like it's, like it's a, for a world title. I'm just so ready for this fight, and I just cannot wait. September 14th. Chester, if you're listening, I don't know, man. I hope you trains. We'll see you Friday. Sports Radio Detroit, check us out. You can get our podcast on Podbean and iTunes at sportsradiodetroit.com.